Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can use Go and WebAssembly. So with Go version 1.11 having just been released with an experimental port to WebAssembly included, I thought it'd be awesome to see how we can write our own Go programs that compile straight to WebAssembly. So in this tutorial we're going to be building a really simple calculator to give us an idea as to how we can write functions that can be exposed to the front end, evaluate DOM elements, and subsequently update any DOM elements with the results from any functions that we call. This will hopefully show you what it takes to write and compile your own Go-based programs for your front end applications. Now, if you haven't guessed already, Go version 1.11 will be required in order for this tutorial to work. Now, the full text version of this tutorial can be found on my website, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So let's dive into our code editor of choice. And we'll build a really simple example that will simply output Hello World in the console whenever we click a button within our web page. This sounds really exciting, I know, but we can very quickly build this up into something more functional and cooler later on. So as you can see within our main.go file, we have just the one main function that simply prints out hello world to the console. Now I could try run this by typing go run main.go and as you can see, just a regular Go program, nothing special about it so far. Next what we'll need is the index.html and I'll be leaving a link to where you can get this in the description below. But essentially this was stolen from the Go Wikipedia page on WebAssembly and it shows how you can instantiate things and how you can run functions. Now, after this, we're gonna need the server.go, which will act as a really simple file server just to serve up our index.html, our wasm exec.js file, and our lib.wasm file that we'll be generating in just a second. And finally, you'll need this WebAssembly underscore exec.js file. And again, I'll be leaving a link to where you can get this in the description below. Now that we've got all the files in place, let's try and compile our Go program into a lib.wasm file or our WebAssembly file. So to do that, we need to set the following. So go arch equals wasm, go operating system equals js, and go build the output of which will be lib.wasm and we'll pass in main.go. This will go away and it'll generate our WebAssembly file. Excellent, so now that we've got our WebAssembly file generated, let's try serving this and seeing if it works within our web application. To do that, type go run server.go and you'll see this starts our server on port 8080. So navigate to that within your browser. Click refresh and you see, should see that this button is active and whenever you click this button, it will successfully print out hello world in the console. Perfect, so we've finally got our basic example of WebAssembly working with Go. Now for the good bit, let's try extend this so that we can do things like DOM manipulation and exposing our own custom Go functions to the front end. So the first thing we would want to do is create a couple of functions. First of which will be the add function. And this will take in an array of type js.value. And within this, we want to do the following. So js.global.set, and that's uppercase set. And we want, want to set the output, output to equal js.value of, and it's gonna be the first argument passed in as an int, plus the second value passed in again cast as type int. Next we want to print line js.value of and again we're going to want to do first value dot int just because I'm feeling lazy and the second value again dot int. And in order for all this to work we're going to have to import syscall slash js like so. Next we want to do is to create a function that will register our callbacks. So func register callbacks and js.global.set 
and again add and we're going to want to set this to a new js callback so js.new callback passing in the name of our function here perfect now within our main function we're going to want to do the following so c is assigned to make and we want a channel of type empty struct and passing in zero and at the very end of our main function we're going to want to do the following so less than sign dash c now this is just a really quick and simple way of preventing our program from exiting before we're ready for it now that that's been set up i want to do the following so instead of hello world go web assembly initialized and i also want to call register callbacks perfect let's try and recompile this and just quickly you can ask this as type string perfect so our WebAssembly file has been recompiled and if we open up our browser and hit the refresh button and then click the run button you should see that go WebAssembly initialized is printed out and we can then do things like add so go add one and two and you'll see that the WebAssembly file outputs three as expected so we've managed to successfully create a function within our Go program and expose that to the front end using the js.new callback function. Now, what happens if we want to take this up slightly further? So let's start off by creating a subtract method. Now, just to show that I'm not cheating, subtract currently doesn't exist, right? So come back into our Go program. Again, we're gonna to want to take in an array of js.value and we're going to want to copy and paste our add. Within here, we're simply going to want to change the plus operator to a minus operator. And again, we're going to want to register this callback. So subtract, subtract, and js.new callback, subtract. Again, recompile this and then open up the browser again. If we refresh the page and we type or hit run again, you should see that subtract is now recognized and we can do subtract three and one. And this will print out two as expected. So whilst we're here, let's quickly modify our index.html so that we don't have to click this run button in order for our instance or our Go program to be initialized. So if I make this quick change and put await go run instance within the instantiate streaming dot then body, and I can then remove this async func like so. I can also remove this button for now. Just comment that out, save that, and then reopen your browser, click the refresh button, and just quickly add the async keyword here. Refresh and you can see Go WebAssembly initialized has successfully been output to the console without us having to click any button. So that's our Go program started. So let's jump back into our index.html and we're going to uncomment this button that we commented out just a moment ago. And I'm going to call this add and I'm going to create a duplicate one called subtract. And within the onClick attribute, I'm going to call this add. I'm going to pass in one and two, and within the on click for the subtract one, I'm going to call subtract, and I'm going to do two and one. And just because we can't have two IDs the same, add button and subtract button. Save that and then reopen up your browser. Reload the page, and I've forgotten to remove the disabled attribute. Remove that, save again. And whenever you click any of these buttons, you should see that it successfully outputs the results in the console below. So I guess the next stage is to start evaluating DOM elements and then using their values instead of the hard-coded values that we have currently. Let's modify our add function within our main.go so that 
it takes in the values of a particular element. So value one is going to be equal to js.global.get and we're going to want to do document.call and we're going to want to do get element by ID and we're going to want to take in the i dot string value and just after this we're going to want to do dot get the value and we're going to want to take this in as a string and then again do the same for value 2 but change i0 to i1 like so next we're going to want to update this line here as well as this one so instead of having this we're going to want to do value 1 plus value 2 and again within here take this out and we want to do value 1 plus value 2 recompile this and why is that complaining and we should have an updated WebAssembly file. Come back into here and you'll notice that it cannot find the target we're after. So let's change that now by going into our index.html and adding two input elements. So the first will be id value one and the second will be value two. And we're gonna update our add function parameters to take in value one and value two. So effectively what this will do is it will parse whatever value is in value 1 and add it to whatever is in value 2 and then it will output the result of that to the console. Go back into our browser and let's add 1 and 2 and you'll see that we have just about got this all up and running. The only problem we have right now is that it concatenates the two string values instead of adding the two numeric values. So let's go ahead and change that now. Go back into our main.go and just in the middle here, we're gonna to want to do the following. So int one, and this will be the output of stringconv.etoi value one. And we're gonna to want to do the same for value two. And you can see that I'm ignoring any error handling right now just because I'm feeling slightly lazy. So replace these and two. And again, we're going to want to recompile this. Coming into our browser for hopefully the final time, you'll see that one plus 23 is indeed 24. So that's working as expected. So I guess the final thing we need to do is output the results of this to an element within our page. And we can do that by manipulating some of the DOM elements. So let's again come back into our add function and instead of doing js.global.set output I want to do the following. So I'm going to want to take in a third parameter or third ID value from my add function that will specify where the results go to. So for now I'm just going to have this as result and I'm going to create a third input value and again give this type or ID of result which matches up with this. Coming back into my add function, I'm going to want to do the following. So js.global.get document.call get element by id. And we want to take in the third parameter, so i2.string. And I'm going to want to set the value of this. So set value equal int one plus int two, like so. Save that, recompile it, and refresh your browser. You should see that the third input box comes up here. And when I click the add button, the results are outputted to this input button. So let's just play around a bit and you'll see that everything is working as expected. Perfect. So in this tutorial, we've managed to learn how you can compile your Go programs into WebAssembly using the new B1.11 of the Go language. 
we've created a really simple calculator that exposes functions from our Go code to our front end, and it also does a bit of DOM manipulation and parsing to boot. So hopefully you found this article useful or interesting. If you did, then I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. And if you wish to support my work, then please feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more programming content. Cheers.